chemical brainwashing and memory suppression. Secrets of the CIA's brainwashing program. This paper will examine how memory works in lower animals and in humans. Then it will use this groundwork to explore how brainwashing drugs have successfully been developed that affect memory for use in covert purposes. Tests on rats have led scientists to conclude that one of the main components of memory is a type of RNA found in brain cells. Rats which learned new mazes more often than other rats had more of this type of RNA in their brain cells. To advance their theory that RNA is important in memory functions in any organism as well as prove that memory can be suppressed or destroyed, scientists conducted experiments on plain area, small organisms found in streams. The simple structure of the plain area allowed scientists to isolate the importance of the RNA molecule more readily as well as find out what caused a memory to be lost. Scientists constructed a specialized tank that allowed the plane area to swim back and forth between its two ends by swimming up or down either of two tubes. The scientists then generated low voltage electrical current into the water which would shock the plane area when they chose to swim up one of the two tubes. The result was that the plane area started remembering which tube would shock them and would no longer use it. To find out if a memory can be destroyed, the scientists then fed the plain area bits of food containing a higher than normal amount of enzyme normally found in their brain cells and in the brain cells of higher organism the plain area, after ingesting the enzyme, began using both tubes again forgetting that one tube would give them electrical shocks. What these experiments proved was not new to the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. The CIA in the late 60s were given drugs by a Russian double agent that had been developed by Soviet scientists to be able to affect human memory. How the drugs work can best be understood by how memory functions in human beings. Human beings, unlike less complex species such as the plain area, have two types of memory function, active and long term. Active utilizes the RNA molecule and is in a different form than long term. Long term is more electrical in nature is and no longer has the RNA molecule as part of its chemical makeup. Both memory functions take place in different parts of the brain. Active memory consists of thoughts formed by learning and by thoughts called up from long term that are needed again. It takes approximately 10 to 15 minutes for a memory inactive to be processed into a long term memory. The first of three drugs spy agencies use is a drug that destroys any new memories that are inactive memory and any new memory 10 to 15 minutes prior to its application. The memories did not make it into long term memory. Throats called up from long term memory that are inactive are not affected. There is no drug used by any spy agency that can affect long-term memory. The drug prevents a person from knowing who drugged them. It also incapacitates a person. The drug also prevents a person from being able to speak or think clearly but they can respond to simple commands such as sit or walk. The second drug that was developed for use to affect memory is a drug that suppresses memory. It is used so a person remembers information later when a third drug that is an antidote is used to release the memory. While under the effect of the suppression drug a person can think and speak fairly coherently. Spies use the antidote to free up any suppressed memories. The suppression drug is used to prevent other spy agencies from knowing what was discussed. It is possible to use the suppression drug to program a person into remembering false facts. Supporting facts are used to make the person think the facts are correct when the antidote is given or the suppression drug wears off. To help facilitate the process. A complex carbohydrate diet is given consisting of no protein. The mind is fooled into thinking the information was learned naturally. To ensure the suppression drug does not wear off at an inopportune time, at a convenient opportunity the antidote is given and then the suppression drug allowing a longer duration of suppression. Subjects brainwashed with these three drugs never notice loss in time. They simply go on with their lives as if nothing happened. Brainwashing drugs that spies use on people covertly are chemically harmless and cause no damage to the mind. However, they can only work on memories that are in the active portion of memory. The American, Russian, and Chinese spy agencies are still trying to develop drugs that will destroy memories that have made it into long term. To try to find a drug that can suppress or destroy a memory that has made it into long term memory, the CIA recruits people who are suicidal or homeless by offering them a large cash payment to test drugs on them. The CIA learns of these subjects from covert operatives employed in the medical records department of hospitals and by operatives employed at homeless shelters. They have agents approach the subject, appeal to his patriotic duty, and then offer a large cash payment in return for the CIA to test a drug on them. After the tests are completed, the CIA holds the person legally responsible for secrecy, threaten him with harassment if he tells, and put his name on a government watch list for life.
They also sign a form that releases the CIA from any liability caused from the test. When a spy agency has been made aware a target has been brainwashed, they administer the antidote and question the subject very carefully since because of the mind's imaginative capabilities the person will remember both true facts and false facts and not know the difference. See other studies by author at www.merrymary61.com.